again, Mark here from Talking Bass. Last week, we looked at the 25 bass groove challenge that I've just released over at the Talking Bass website. This week, we're going to look at the 25 slap groove challenge. This follows the same system of working through progressively more difficult riffs, starting out with simple thumb slap lines, then moving through pops, ghost notes, cross hammers, chords, and other techniques before finishing up with some tricky Victor Wooten style double thumbing. In this lesson, we're going to look at five different lines that should give you an idea of the variety of grooves in the challenge. If you want to to try out the challenge for yourself, just follow the link below to Talking Bass, log into the free members area, you can quickly and easily sign up if you're not a member, it's totally free, and the challenges are there in the practice room page. Each groove is demonstrated by myself and awesome studio drummer Rupert Brown, and you'll find the sheet music tab and a separate practice track all embedded below each video. Okay, we'll start with a look at groove number six. This is a nice groove making use of simple slap, pop, and hammer-on techniques. So this riff's in G minor and we start with the following bar. Okay, so we just start with a basic G octave there, third fret E string, fifth fret D string. Then we have an open A string and a hammer on to the uh, B flat there at the first fret of the A string. And then we have the B flat at the third fret of the G string, popped, so. Okay. And you'll notice there that I actually play a little bit of a ghost note. This is just kind of to keep time. So, so I land there, one and two. So I land on two there and then... For the next bar, we've got the following. So we've got an F octave. First fret E string, the third fret on the D string. Slap and pop. Then we have the B sliding up to the C, second fret to the third fret of the A string, and then the octave of the C there at the fifth fret of the G string. So we just slap that B, slide up one fret, and then pop the octave, okay? Bars three and four are almost identical, but just with a lead up at the end. So we have to bring us back round. So that's F and F sharp, back to the G, first fret, second fret, to the third fret on the E string. So what do we need to look out for there from a technical standpoint? Well, the first thing to look out for is the note duration. So if we just look at the first, uh, the first two opening notes, that G octave, the first note is held for its full duration, okay? But then the octave there, that high G is played staccato, so it's very short, okay? And you'll see a little dot above the eighth note there on the sheet music. That's a staccato note. So full held duration, and then that short little snappy pop there, and we do that by just stabbing at it with that fourth finger. So I'm in position, the finger's there just held against the string, on the D string that is, and then we just stab at it slightly with that pinky, with the fourth finger. And as soon as you've played it, don't let go, because if you do, you're gonna get loads of noise. You just leave it there held slightly against the string. Okay, so that's a really, really important technique to nail when you're learning slap, because a lot of those, um, a lot of those octave patterns that you get are played this way. Full note duration and then staccato pop. So, as any of you that have seen any of my other slap lessons will know, I often talk about home position. Now, home position isn't something that I invented. It's, you know, it's just a way that most people play when they've been playing for, uh, for a while. Uh, but I always find it handy to, uh, to talk about this when we're talking about slapping because it's a way of stopping a lot of the noise and it's a good way of controlling the notes. So, the home position that I talk about is just my default hand placement and it's just giving us a position of silence so to do this just take that first finger there just lay it lightly across the a d and g strings any fret will do so you just lay that against the string so we're not pressing down we're just holding against it then the second third and fourth fingers we bring those down as well in the same way and the second and third fingers will probably just come slightly over the e string so over here so when you do that 
everything is held down. So we've uh, not held down against the neck. Everything is locked down so there's no noise. So if you were to play, you just get ghost notes, okay? So if I was pressing down, you know, we'd get a note. But we're just held against there and that's how you actually get ghost notes. But the good thing about this is if you use this as your default go-to hand position, especially, you know, if you're on stage and you've just turned up, Put your hand there and then you're not going to get any residual noise, you're not going to get any problems if you bang the bass or anything like this. You know, no matter what happens, everything's locked down and we're not going to get any noise. So when we use this home position as our default hand position, it means that we're working from this position of silence and we can allow the notes to come through. So if I'm going for a G there, third fret of the E string, I've got the hand there, I've got the first finger held down just above the, uh, the third fret. These fingers are held down. When I want to play that G, I just press down with the G with the first finger and I just raise these fingers, okay? Then when I want to choke it off, I just go back to the home position, okay? So we're working from the position of silence and then allowing the note through. So this riff is a really good way to practice this home position because I start in that position, in the home position, then I go for the G octave, my hand is there, ready, I allow the G through, and then I allow the pop through, and then I'm just back to the home position. So everything is silent afterwards, okay? So this is a very efficient way of playing, and it keeps minimal hand position there. See, there's hardly any movement at all, and as soon as we come back, everything is dead quiet. Now, obviously, you don't have to get too obsessive with this because, you know, if you're always thinking, oh, I've got to get my hands back down and in this flat position, then, you know, it's going to cause problems when you're going for open strings and things like that. It's just something to be aware of. And yes, a, you know, for a lot of things that you might play, you're going to want curled fingers. You know, you don't always want to have the hand flat like this, but when you're playing slap lines like this and you're trying to cut down on a lot of noise, this is a really good way to go. So you want to get those notes under your fingers, try it really, really slowly, and then just build up speed. So you might try it this tempo. Two, three, four... Once you're up to speed, you can try with the backing track. Next, let's have a look at groove number 11. This riff is a little more up-tempo and makes use of ghost notes. So this riff makes use of a lot of ghost notes, which is where the home position comes in really useful. So we're pretty much over an E7 kind of chord, so it's pretty E mixolydian with a few minor thirds um, thrown in there for good measure. So the first bar sounds like this. So for the first two notes, we have D to E, fifth fret to seventh fret on the A string. So it's a hammer on there, so we just slap the D, hammer on on the E. Then we have two ghost notes, a slap and a pop, A string and G string. So here I'm laying the hand across in the home position again for those two ghost notes. So you'll notice if you're in the home position, you get ghost notes. So. Then we have G to G sharp there. So fifth fret to the uh, sixth fret of the D string, again slapped. and then two ghost notes again, exactly the same, A string and G string. So we're pretty much getting used to this kind of slap, hammer on, slap pop, two ghost notes action. If you can get, if you can get used to that action, it'll make things a lot, lot easier. So just start with maybe that D to E. Just get used to that action, okay? Just of the slap, hammer on, slap pop ghost note. It gets you used to playing the note, hammering on, and then going into home position. Start out as slow as you need to, and then just build up speed. 
Once you can do that, you can move around all over the place using that effect. So we've got that move twice. And then we have C sharp to D and G to A. Fourth fret to fifth fret on the A string, third fret to the fifth fret on the E string. And that's the first bar. For the next bar, we have the following. Okay, so we're sliding into an A octave here. So the A octave is fifth fret A, uh, sorry, fifth fret E string, and then seventh fret on the D string. And we're sliding in from the G, the third fret of the E string. So you slap that uh, G, the third fret of the E string, slide up to the fifth fret. Then you play the octave. Okay, so slap, slide, slap, pop. Then we have the two ghost notes again. So slap and pop, this time on the E string and D, uh, D string. So just get used to that move now. Again, you can isolate that move and just play it round and round, building up speed, so you get used to that mu uh, muscle memory. Finally, for that bar, we have... So we have A to the B, 5th fret to 7th fret, slap, hammer on. Two ghost notes, this time E string and G string. So, again, you can see me moving into the home position. Then... Just an octave on the D there, so 5th fret A string, and then 7th fret on the G string, slap, pop, okay? Okay, so... So, when we put those two bars together, we get the following. Okay, so you just want to try that round and round to begin with. And then just build up speed on that, so. Bars three and four are pretty much the same as bars one and two, but with a little difference in the ending. Okay, so instead of the A to the B there, and then the D octave, we have C sharp to D, slide, so that's 4th fret to 5th fret on the A string. Then the two were ghost notes, slap, pop, A string, G string. And then G octave, so 3rd fret E string, 5th fret on the D string. Okay, so... So... And that's it. So once you've nailed those two halves in isolation, you can just try putting them together slowly. So it might take a little bit of doing at first to just get used to the difference between those, but eventually you'll be able to get it down. So obviously the big thing here is the ghost notes. Okay, which you can use the home position for, and you want to get used to that move of slap, hammer on, ghost note, ghost note. Just, just get used to playing that fast, and then when you play it slow, it'll be a lot, lot easier. So, once you've got that down, and you've got it up to speed, you can try it with the track. Next we have groove number 18, and this riff makes use of some strummed notes and double notes. So we're in the key of G minor and the first bar sounds like this. So we have this G octave here, 3rd fret E string and 5th fret on the D string. Okay, so again I'm starting in the home position there, you know, position of silence. You play the, uh, you slap the G and then we have a ghost note on the E string and then the pop. 
with this eighth note to sixteenth note rhythm. So that's another move that you really want to work on. You know, you'll hear that a lot. You know, that slap, ghost note and pop. Next we have this funky little double stop with the hammer on, which is strummed, so... So we've got F and B flat on the top, so both third fret, D string and G string, so I'm just barring the, uh, the first finger over there. And we're going to be strumming that with the fingers, the back of the fingernails there, so... Now one thing that you can do here to make things a little bit easier and to stop any residual noise is to actually bring the thumb round to mute the E and the A string. That way, you're not going to be getting, you know, anything like this. You know, ideally, you want to be aiming with accuracy and just getting the D and the G string, but you know, when, you, when you're in the heat of battle, you know, sometimes you can hit that A string. So this actually stops any of that happening. Okay, so you play the uh, double stop there and then you just hammer on with the second finger at the B natural at the fourth fret of the G string. Okay, okay. Next we have two ghost notes on the E string. Just slapped there. And then we have E to F natural, second fret to the third fret of the D string, both popped. Okay, so all of that. That's the first bar. The second bar is similar but sounds like this. Okay, so we've got this little at the end. So the start is the same, but then we have slap pop ghost note, hit E string and D string. So I'm just laying the fingers across again, home position. Then so we have D to E, hammer on, so slap the 5th fret of the, uh, of the A string, hammer on at the 7th fret, ghost note, and then we pop the G at the 5th fret of the D string and then slap it as well. So we get this, this little double note there. Bar number 3 is the same as bar number 1. But then bar 4 sounds like this. To bring us back around. So we have open A string there, the A. Hammer onto the B flat at the first fret. Then we have a ghost note. Then a pop on the B flat at the third fret of the G string. And again, ghost note slap. And then pop at the B flat. So we just play that ghost note B flat twice. Then, so B natural to the C, second fret to the third fret there on the A string. Then ghost note, slap, pop, A string, G string. Then F, F sharp, first fret, second fret, E string to bring us back round. Okay, so obviously we've got a few things to think about here technically. We've got We've got the little double stop with the hammer on there, bring the, th the thumb over to uh, mute the bottom strings. We've got slapped ghost notes, we've got popped ghost notes, and we've got the double, uh, the double note there with the pop and the slap. So there's a few things to think of, so start out slowly with this and practice each bar in isolation. So... So once you're up to speed, you can try with the track. let's have a look at groove number 22. Now here we've ramped up the difficulty quite a bit. This riff is in 7-8 and features a tricky little move as you'll see. So 
So this riffs in E minor and it's in 7-8, so for some of you this might be a little bit of an odd time signature, but don't worry about that too much because once you've got the notes under your fingers it kind of plays itself. And really you only have to see this as kind of 4-4 four, four, minus 1 eighth note, but don't get too caught up in any of the counting kind of thing. So the main basis of this riff we have. Okay, so we've got two open E strings there. So we've we play the E, then we choke, play the E and choke. So they're fairly short. Then we have three slaps on the D at the fifth fret of the A string, and then a hammer on at the E seventh fret of the A string. So that's the first part. And you can see here that if you're going to think of the home position kind of thing, the first finger is around the uh, fifth fret there. So I've got that laid there over the fifth fret and the other fingers down here. And it's really important to get this home position here for this because we're going to be doing a lot of this. We're going to be doing a lot of this kind of hammer on slap thing. And if you're in the home position, it makes things a lot, lot easier. You basically use the second, third and fourth fingers for that flappy motion. So for the next part of the riff, we have the following. So we've got this little flurry. Okay, so we have a single open E string, then we choke off, then we have. So that's what this little flurry is. So we slap the D at the fifth fret of the uh, A string. Then we have this percussive kind of hammer on slap with the fingers. Then we slap the D again at the 5th fret of the A string. Then we slap and hammer on to the E there. Okay, now in terms of this kind of percussive hammer on slap thing, um, if you're in home position, that first finger laid lightly across the 5th uh, fret there of the A, D and G strings, you're going to be using the 2nd, 3rd and 4th fingers there to come down and get this percussive bang, okay? Now, you don't want to press down. You don't want a hammer on. You don't want this. You don't want that. You just want to bash it against, against the fretboard, basically. So just try bringing those fingers down after you've, after you've hit that D, just enough to get that. Start as slight as you can, just choking. And if you do that slightly harder, you'll get that bang. Okay, so we're not pushing, we're just, you know, getting that thud, okay? So, that is a really useful kind of um, technique to get down because you'll hear it a lot in those kind of um, percussive lines that you might hear from people like Mark King. So you get this kind of line. All of that is down to this. And also, when you get any of those kind of machine gun triplets, all that is is that played fast. So let's try that first bar round and round. So you want to get it down slow like that, you know, focus on the actual rhythm in there. We've got a little 16th note triplet. Sorry. And then just build up speed. And like I said, you don't really have to think about the 7, 8 side of things. I'm not counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Not at all. I'm just playing the notes that are there. As soon as I've made that hammer on, I'm back at the beginning. The second bar of this groove misses out that little flurry and we just have... We have... C sharp octave, 4th fret A string, 6th fret G string. Then you slap that C sharp again at the 4th fret of the A string and just slide it up to the D, okay? And then we're back. Bar 3 is the same as bar 1 and then in bar 4 we have another little variation at the end. So here, 
We've got A to B, fifth fret to seventh fret on uh, the E string, slap and hammer on. And then we have a D octave there, fifth fret, A string, seventh fret on the G string. Okay, now in terms of the notes there, that's incredibly simple, but the hard thing is actually muting the E string. So what you can do here is actually use the second finger to mute the E string when you shift. Now that is a little bit of a finger independence exercise, and if you overthink it, you're likely to mess it up. But if you just go for the octave there, the first and fourth fingers, and just let that second finger just rest there. Okay, so it's just staying there, centralized, and just practice playing that to begin with. Then you can put it all together. So as you can see with this challenge, these later grooves are a little bit more complicated and if you've not done any slapping before at all then you know forget these because you know all all this kind of stuff is going to be completely new to you and you really want to work up in progressive steps but if you've been playing a while then you can work through the whole thing and you might be able to highlight some of your deficiencies so let's try that riff with the track and the count in is one two or one two three Finally, let's have a look at groove number 25, the final riff in the challenge. This is a double thumb line very much in the style of Victor Wooten's classical thump. So this riffs in A major or maybe A mixolydian mode and um, really with this you just need to get down the action. Once you've got down the action you can just work through all of the different notes in there. So let's have a look at an A fifth fret of the E string. Just look at what this action is going to be. So for each of these notes we're going to be using an open string and then a hammer on. So for this A because it's on the um, E string we play the open E string slapped and really you want to be using a rest uh, stroke slap for this. You want to bring that down and bring the thumb to rest on the A string. Then we have a hammer on at the A, the fifth fret of the E string. And then we come up with the thumb. So this is the double thumb. Okay, so if you've never done any double thumbing before, I'm not going to go through all the uh, ins and outs of it here, but um, you know, you'll need to work on your double thumbing a bit before you can try this. But uh, if you can double thumb already, then it shouldn't be too bad. So it's open string, hammer on, and then up stroke. So you just want to get down that first. Then let's work through a few more notes of it. The next note would be an E at the seventh fret of the uh, A string. So that's. We're going to be in position for that. We play the open, uh, the open A string slapped, hammer on, which I'm hammering on with the fourth finger there, and then upstroke. So if we just take those first two notes, the A and the E, we have. So you kind of got to get used to that action first, that muscle memory. And one tip I would give you with this is to really focus on getting a good attack on the upstroke because it's easy for that to uh, you know disappear in all of this because the the open string is obviously going to have a lot of attack because you're hitting it with the slap the downstroke okay the hammer on is pretty easy so you're going to be getting a lot of attack with that but if you're not careful you're going to get a very weak upstroke so you really want to get a bit of a, a bit a bit of purchase on that so so really the action is a kind of in-out kind of action against the fretboard. Remember what I said about the, uh, about the rest stroke thing? You bring the thumb through, rest it on the A string, and then bring it back. Then when we play it on the A string, we rest the thumb on the D string, and then come back. Okay? And obviously you're going to be using the outer edge of the thumbnail here. Just get used to playing that first of all. 
So because all of these notes are played in threes, we've pretty much got a 16th note sextuplet kind of rhythm. Or a 16th note triplet feel. So we're going to be working through the following notes. A, E, A, and back down. Okay, so it's basically a, an extended power chord we've got. 5th fret E string, 7th fret A string, 7th fret on the D string. So try that first of all. So we play through that pattern twice. And then on the third time, we work up to the B. So, so after the A, and we play the B there, ninth fret of the D string, and back down. And then once we've got all the way back down to the A again, so we work all the way down, and then we hit the E again to finish off. Okay? So let's try those first two bars slowly. For the next two bars, we simply take that whole pattern and move it down to G, down a whole step. And then we're back. So obviously the difficulty of this riff is all going to be based around your experience with double thumbing. If you've never tried double thumbing before, it's going to seem pretty difficult. But if you have tried double thumbing, then, you know, it might not be too bad. You just have to get used to the, uh, to the, the muscle memory of that open string hammer on, you know, upstroke. And like I said, you really want to focus on getting that purchase on the upstroke. So you really want to catch it with the thumbnail there. So, try that riff slowly, build up speed, and then you can try with the track. Okay, so that's the 25 slap groove challenge. We've only scratched the surface here with these five examples. There are another 20 grooves to work through, so that should really test your slap skills and highlight the areas that you might need to work on. So as I mentioned at the start of this lesson, just get on over to Talking Bass, log in as usual for, you know, for members, sign up if you're not a Talking Bass member, it's totally free, and then check out both the 25 bass groove challenge and the 25 slap groove challenge in the practice area. You'll also find a ton of other free practice resources in there, such as the ebook downloads, the scale and arpeggio guides, and much, much more. So go check it out, and I'll see you next week.